Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. We start this video in a dark and lonely place. Where is that? Well, it is a command line, specifically my command line. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm going to run this command for one very specific reason. I want you to see what operating system I am running. And there's a reason behind my madness here. You will notice here, I am running Windows 11. That is very relevant to what we are about to do. This is something you did not used to be able to do, uh, but now you can which is kind of cool. So what we're gonna do, we'll open up this folder. It's a Godot sample project, just so I have to something to demonstrate with you. And I'm going to run something called Z. Z is an editor. Next thing I want you to notice is how fast this is about to open up. So boom, project open, boom. That's the impressive thing about Zed. By the way, if I just scared your cat, I apologize. So here we can see we are now inside of Zed. Now Zed has been available for a number of years now. I did a video about it a while back and the entire idea behind Zed was all about performance. It is written in Rust. I know we've got, I just elicited a certain anti-Rust comment down in the comments below by saying that, but this is a performance focused editor from the point of the quick startup that you just saw to this. Uh, it's not really that impressive to look at it as I'm zooming this in, but it's actually using GPU acceleration for the rendering of the text in the windows. All the aspects of Z are around performance, which is a very cool thing. But the thing is you could not run this on windows until now. Uh, now you can, which is a big development there. I do love that fact. And frankly, I, I haven't used Z a whole lot, but in using it, it just feels Swift. It's got a nice cleanness to it. And of course, this is the age of AI. So all of that crap is here as well. So you're gonna notice over here, you've got your, your agent buttons and so on. But the cool thing here is you can bring your own. So I have a Gemini uh, account, for example, I hooked up Gemini. Uh, you can actually hook this up to work with like a wide variety of models. Uh, so I'll come over here, you can configure, you can add in various different LLM models and external agents and so on. Uh, at the same time, you can add your own in or you can use their free versions. We'll get back to like how this is structured and priced and etc. Uh, in just a second. We just know that that stuff is all available. And the stuff is, it's got your typical AI stuff. So I could go here, uh, let me just go ahead and I'll select this chunk of code right here. Uh, and then I'm gonna go over here and say, what does this code do? And then I'll give it the selection uh, attribute like so. And then we'll go ahead and run it. And of course you've got, then it'll send it off to Gemini. Gemini will do its thing and it'll come back and answer exactly what the code actually does. Of course, you can also have it do things, uh, work at the project level, handle uh, edits and so on. So in the world of AI, we all, this is just the norm now. So it's all integrated in. Nice thing here is they're not trying to force you into their system if you already have something. Like for example, here I have Gemini, I am using Gemini. But if I wanted to switch between models, I can. If I want to add something new, I can. So that is all integrated in here as well. We also have debugging available over here, which is very cool. And we also have uh, a terminal. Again, the other thing that I'm really impressed with as I'm doing this is again, how fast these things pop up. You also again have, uh, inline assistance. So if you need help with your terminal uh, command, you can generate it there as well. Your AI is fully integrated, of course. Uh, and then you have uh, your prediction editing. So this gets into the ZAI stuff if you want, or you could set up and work with um, Copilot if you want to have text predictions and so on. Uh, and then you have notifications. So all of those are configured over there. You're going to go now so over here, you have a number of different options. So there is your project tree. Again, very, very quick. Uh, here we've got Git integration, if you wish, available there. Uh, we've got the outline panel here, it's kind of breaking down again, the outline of our code. You're gonna notice it understands what GD script is. I'll show you the language support in just a second. I'll also talk about one of the problems I'm having with Z right now, and is this one. You're gonna notice this failed to run. That's because I can't get the language server to work, and that's because it requires NC or Netcat, and that's because that's not on Windows. So it is a new port to Windows, but you're going to have some problems. Even with WSL, which it does support, by the way, the Windows Linux subsystems are supported, but it still doesn't hook up. So I got some, some figuring to do. So just to know, this does still work better on Mac and Linux. Just It's just the truth of things. And the other thing that they've got going on big time is they have a cal calibration, uh, uh, sorry, collaboration option available here. So you can do real-time editing, voice chatting, share notes, etc. If you're working on code with somebody else, that is a key aspect of this guy as well. Uh, and then finally, we'll go over here to settings. You can see you had a huge amount of settings available here in terms of configuration. So you see I jacked up the, the font size, for example, so you can see it. Uh, we also have a number of different themes. I'll show you the themes in a different way in just a second. Uh, and I mentioned earlier on language for example, it does use language servers. And that is the area that I am having trouble getting to work with on Windows. But if we scroll down to the bottom here, you're going to notice a number of different languages supported. You're going to notice GD Script, GD Shader are also here as well. Well, I added those as extensions. You'll see over here, there's an extension system available. And 
a number of extensions. A lot of these are just simple themes, etc. but there's there's more than that. So there's good community support behind this one as well. So a decent amount of extensions available as we keep scrolling, all available there. Now I mentioned earlier on about themes. Well, uh, Control Shift P, I set it up to use the key codes from Visual Studio. You can use whichever ones you wish, by the way. Um, also, for the masochists among you, there is a VI mode that can be easily toggled on and off. I forget exactly where that is. Uh, there, VI mode, Vim mode. So if you want to have Vim mode, it's all integrated in there as well. Uh, I've forgotten all the keys for Vim, so I'm not even going to dream of that. But here, let's go. Command Shift P. Again, there you see all of your various different uh, commands that are available here at this point in time. Or we can do there, theme, theme selector, I think that one, and then I could pick another theme. So for example, here, boom, different light theme. And again, do you notice how fast that switch? Fast, fast, fast. That's the key thing about Zed. That's the thing I very much like about Zed. So if you're thinking that like Visual Studio Code is just too bloated for you, and you're willing to work a little bit harder. So again, you're gonna have to set up your language servers if you wanna get that code completion, etc. But once you've got that, if you want to move to something a little bit less bloated, a little bit more performance oriented, Zed may be perfect for you. So uh, this is Zed, by the way, Zed is available at zed.dev. Oh, for some reason, for a second, I thought that was, uh, uh, what's the word, forward and backwards, but it's, that would be z.des. Uh, anyways, uh, it is editor available, completely free download, available for Mac, Linux, and now Windows. You see here, the new announcement, Z is now available on Windows. That is why I am specifically covering it today. Kind of go through it again. We already talked about the big things here. Uh, all your AI stuff is integrated in. It is fast. So it's written from scratch in Rust and uses multiple CPU cores and your GPU in the process. It is collaborative. And I got to say, like that fast, you're kind of like, why do I need my editor to be fast? But then when you work with a fast editor and then you go back to a slower one, you kind of get why you like fast. So again, it is now available on Windows, which is awesome. It does have integrated debugger support, integrated Git, uh, edit of prediction, agentic editing available, remote development. Uh, it's got the Vim modes that we saw going on and so on. And then there's a bunch more things that they are currently working on. You can get an idea of what those are all there. And again, all of those extensions are available as well, which is nice. Uh, and then finally going back over here, the new news here is that Zed is now available on Windows. So it's here, fast, native, uh, and ready for your team. So. Uh, they, they actually, I think, had a lot of trouble getting Zed to work because a lot of the subsystems that um, Mac and Linux have, Zed doesn't necessarily have. It does say WSL is built in, but for some reason it's not picking up my NC or NetCat from WSL. So I don't know what's going on there. But again, a bit of a learning curve. It is new to Windows. So just expect the experience it isn't going to be as flawless as it is on Mac or Linux. And if you haven't checked this out on any platform, I recommend doing so. Again, you may just come to appreciate the speed that you didn't know that you were missing. So the other thing to know about this one is the cost. And personally, free. So uh, here it's got 2,000 accepted edit predictions. No idea what the heck that means, uh, but I'm using um, my own provider anyway, so I don't think it's a really big deal because you got unlimited use of your API key or external agents like Cloud Code. But there is a priced version of it. Uh, so a pro version is out there uh, with unlimited edit predictions, $5 of tokens, and usage-based building beyond $5. So if you want to hook it with their, their AI stuff, you can get it in the pro version. And then there's an enterprise version over here uh, with additional features available as well. But you can go ahead, you can check it out pretty easily there. Uh, there's also a pro trial if you wanna see if the pro is worthwhile to you. Uh, but I, I think for most of us, especially if we're just doing it as a rather casual editor, you'll be more than good to go with the personal version. But I haven't used it enough to actually run up against a wall where I'd need pro. So if you have used it and you are a pro member, why did you pay to upgrade? Let me know that in the comments down below. But ladies and gentlemen, that is is Zed, available at Zed.dev, and most importantly, now also available on Windows. Again, if you are looking for a lightweight code editor that is fast but capable, Zed is it's very tempting, especially as, I, in my opinion, Visual Studio Code is marching towards bloat. And then some of the other things, like say Sublime Text, just don't do enough out of the box. So Zed kind of hits that perfect middle ground for me, and I think I'll be sticking around with it for a little while. So let me know what you think of Zed. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.